and what it kind your, of explains what all that. was your childhood like I mean, obviously awesome. Really? Uh, no, I grew up in an alcoholic home. Um, I grew up in an alcoholic home. Mom, and, dad? Uh, mom. Mom. And uh, dad gone. You know, um, I don't talk a ton about my dad because I'm still kind of processing all of it. And I'm still really, like, protective of him. He was my hero. Um, but, you know, being a man without money at that time with kids and complications, you know, you got to do a lot of sketchy shit, you know? So I actually have a lot of admiration for him, whereas... When I was younger, I was like, my dad lied to me. My dad didn't pick me up from school and his mistresses picked me up from school and he did all this fucked up shit. And like, I'm in a 12 step program now, but it's like, I now know like in my cells that like he did the best he could. And that being a man during that time and the way my grandfather raised him, like, you know, he just didn't have the tools. Like men back then weren't like, I have to hug my daughter and tell her how smart she is. Like he just didn't learn that. You know, and I like that he didn't raise me as if I was a girl, if that makes any sense. He kind of raised me like I was his son. You know, we were playing sports, we were playing basketball. You know, the time I did have with him, he was just like beating the shit out of me on the basketball court, making sure I was good, you know, and uh, like slamming me with spelling words to make sure I was going to do well on the test. Like he didn't care if I, I liked him. He only wanted me to succeed in life. You know, he taught me a work ethic that was like next level. You know, I'm the same way with Murphy. Really? I'm to the point where she's big into martial arts. She's really excelling over there. That's awesome. At the age of five. I mean, she excels. That's she's one crazy. of those kids that excels at everything. Like, she's good at the pool. They like her. Well, that's because you probably don't coddle her when she doesn't achieve anything. <sighs> I try to raise how my mother raised me. I was raised without a dad for a few years, so my mom had to play both hands of the, of the fence. And when you see a woman do that, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. I respect it like you respect your dad today. You I do. respect my mother for that smack in the head when I wouldn't get off the donkey on 86th <laughs> Street and Broadway and shit like that. You know, like I just, so I try to treat her the same way. The other night she clocked me in the face. My mom smacked me in the face once. I, I didn't smack her back. I just grabbed her and said, you can't do this. And I explained to her why. And I gave her a timeout. And she was very apologetic and she's uh she wants to do good yeah she's good but i'm gonna try to raise her the same way your dad raised you he w he would always say to me i don't need you to like me i'd be like i hate you and he's like i don't care he's like i i'm gonna make it hard in here so it's easy out there how long ago did he pass uh two years year and a half you still think about him a lot yeah a lot i'll start crying um yeah, it was really fucked up. Um, the story is too horrifying. I don't want to upset no, any, no, no, anybody. No, no, no. I don't yeah. want to bring it out of you right now. Yeah, but um, he was a badass, like, Duke of Deception, warrior, um, you know, and... Uh, was he a gangster? He was a, what we just call, like, a white-collar criminal. Like, okay, he was Lone we'll Shark. Yeah, like, we okay. would have, like, really expensive paintings in our studio apartment. And, you know, I, I got, like, an Acura when I turned 16. I Like, I'd get collateral. Was the, like, I would, you know, for Christmas when I was eight, I got, like, an engagement ring. <laughs> like, all right. Like, I, you know, he was, um, and I think at the time I didn't understand how, like, magical his existence was because I was so... I just wanted more of his time and I couldn't get it, you know, and because he was always gone and he'd he'd leave for a day. But then I'll be back tomorrow and I wouldn't see him for like a month. And then he'd come back with, you know, with all these incredible stories and gifts. And, you know, um, that was confusing for me. And he'd leave me in dangerous situations and stuff, which I think at the time he didn't understand how dangerous they were. Um, so I'm still at the place in my life where I'm trying to delineate like anger around it and resentment around it and and just acceptance that like he did the best that he could you know um but he was a motherfucker and i'm grateful because you have to be a motherfucker to survive I this was mom's. world mom is you know i'm really grateful that she w worked when i was a kid because i saw how hard you have to work um and i'm grateful for that but yeah i mean she's i have a lot of addiction in my family a lot of it you said you were in a 12-step program i'm an al-anon yeah and this is the one where you grow up around people who that's right because a lot of times you treat it a certain way that's right because okay. you when you grow up in an al alcoholic home you develop this overdeveloped sense of responsibility where you think you have to solve everybody else's problems because as a kid you're the one making dinner you're the one handling shit you're the one you know going we got to go to school you're the one like organizing you know carpool like i just had to be an adult way too young and you also get addicted to adrenaline and excitement 
you know? So even coming out of the womb, like I was already like, so you tend to recreate your childhood circumstances by seeking out broken people, other addicts, um, chaos, adrenaline, stuff like that, and then perfectionism because I had to work so hard to get attention that the message I got was like, if you're not perfect, you're not worthy of love, you know? So that's, Al-Anon is like, you know, a lot about that. It's, you know, they say like in AA, you know, whereas addicts that use substances or alcohol are addicted to alcohol or cocaine, whatever, al are addicted to people who are addicted to alcohol or cocaine or whatever. Fuck know? ups. Right, no, Fuck I mean, ups. just addicted to the drama of like, I'm gonna save you and I'm gonna fix you right. and I'm gonna. Uh, it's gonna work, you're the fucking dude in the. If I just love you enough. Less than zero. And it's really, it's a martyr complex. It really is. We say the three it M's. It really is. Mothering, really martyring, is. micromanaging. That it is really sort of is. what we end up having, which it's its own defect. Like let people have the dignity of their own experience. It's, it's like you have like a God complex. Like you have to rescue everybody. And it's just like obnoxious. So My mother was an alky. My mother had a bar. So her alcoholism was based off her business. She thought like Bert for her to sell drinks. You had to have drinks. So Fair. she would get there at 10 and start belting them out. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up around her cocaine, like in the 70s and late 60s. I, I would tell her to wipe her nose, like you're fucking embarrassing me. Like I still remember being seven or eight and going, Doug, wipe your fucking nose, will you? Yeah. I had it that yeah. together that I could say that yep. and she would apologize later on. And you know, she was like, I do it on once in a while. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Just keep your nose clean around yeah. me, you know? I grew up with that. And it was funny because Monday I went to Mercy's school recital at 8 30 in the fucking morning. It was that night that I got home when I broke and couldn't fall asleep. You ever had those nights? Yeah, every you night. You gotta be up somewhere and it's her thing and I wanted to look nice and fucking all night long. I kept, get, I thought I had to pee and I would get up, take <laughs> my dick out. out. <laughs> no pee comes out. Why am I waking up? Why am I waking up at four? No pee comes out. Then you go back, and then again you're something You're hot, happens. you're cold, oh. yes, you check your phone, and then you really can't sleep. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It was funny that I went to her thing, and I got a little high before I went that morning just to soothe it out, and I sat. I went to the kindergarten with her and read the book my, while my wife got the seat. So we would have to wait online like Studio 54. It was a huge line. So we got the seat. When I was sitting there watching my daughter, it's so funny. Wait till you have a kid, Whitney, Whitney Houston, Whitney coming someday. And all we both done Miyagi's. All this shit comes back in front of you. And that's why I'm in Al Anon, because I don't want to repeat the same shit. Like all this shit that. So, no, no, I'm not doing. I'm not talking about that. I'm uh -huh. talking about while I'm sitting there. When she came out, I saw her like go like this. And when she saw me, her little face just melted and she just went. Like she can't wink with this eye but she really tried to and she looked at me and my wife goes she didn't even look at me she doesn't <laughs> give a fuck but right away I thought about one time when it was my birthday and in those days my mom would get home you know I was five or six my mom would get home at 3.30 in the morning from New York I, she would wake up with me dress me get me ready for school but just from the smell and just from the look of her I knew that yeah you know, that was as good as it was going to get. And I never questioned her. I liked walking to school by herself. Her being an alky gave me the independence that yeah, I the wanted. Same, uh, yeah. Do you understand me? I so, do like being alone. Yeah. You being passed out at two right. is actually kind of convenient kinda for nice. me. <laughs> so Most I, people want their parents to be passed out all day. So I would go to school. And sometimes I'd come home for lunch and she'd still be passed out. And sometimes yeah. I'd come home at three and now she'd have the house coat on. And she was making bets on the phone and yeah. numbers and figuring out what the score of the Mets game was. So I had a, I, I, you know, I had a birthday party. It was my fucking birthday. I'm in kindergarten. I'm Spanish. Yeah. It's all white kids. Nobody really likes me. They don't know what a fucking Cuban is. And I'll never forget that at 2 o'clock in the afternoon there was a knock on the door. And it was my mother with the Puerto Rican, with her little Puerto Rican buddy. And they were both fucked up already. You could see... And they came with two cases of Coke and cans and a Carvel ice cream cake. And I became the hero of the day. Like, I never forgot that. Carvel, oh, uh, the whale. <laughs> That's my shit. Oh, shit. That was, that she was. brought the whale, the whale. happy birthday. All those first graders at kindergarten went crazy. My mom was the favorite mom. The hero. Everybody's mother brings Kool-Aid. 
the fuck? This lady showed up with two cans. It's a of, Carvel two, bitch, with yeah. Two, two cases of Cokes and cans and whatever. And I'll never forget that memory. Like that, I was good with my mom after that. If she never did anything else ever again. I was good with that simple memory of her showing up at two o'clock, mm-hmm. hungover as fuck. You, you could already tell she had a shot of something. Because in the morning she would wake up with Heineken and tomato juice. Ooh. She would do th- three or four of those. Those were her breakfast. Mm. Then an egg, and then wherever the day took her. We got to go to the Met game, so let's get going. She'd stop at a liquor store so yep. she could do sips all the way up. That's. But she was functioning. Yeah. My, my, was I mean, your mom functioning? Highly. Wow. Highly. Um, you know, and uh, and yeah, and I and it's interesting because I think for me, like, you know, my family had very good taste. Like, I, there was this illusion of um, affluence, you know? Like, you don't know you're poor until you go to someone else's house, right? You know what I mean? But we lived in Georgetown and D.C., and it was this, like, ostensibly really fancy area, but, like, then there was the eviction notice, and that, like, I remember there was... You know, I was just, I haven't thought about this in a long time, but when you talked about school, I carry just like embarrassment with me all the time. You know, like I'm like, hey, sorry, do I, like I always think I have something in my teeth. I always think I'm like embarrassing myself in some way. Um, you know, whenever I like say hi to someone or talk to someone, I'm like, oh, why did you just say that? That was so stupid. You know, I just like beat myself up. And I always think there's some kind of like elaborate like prank going on. It's like a paranoia. And, uh, and remind me to tell you my Arya Shafir story about that uh, in a minute, how it like perfectly collided with this paranoia I have the time he hid my backpack at the comedy store and I went crazy because <laughs> I thought that my worst fear was actually confirmed. I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, one time I remember I got pulled out of class and because the tuition wasn't paid for the school and they put like a note on my shirt. It was like a safety pin and it was a little note and it said like you know a note to my parents saying you have to pay this and i could read i guess at that time and i didn't and it was like a scarlet letter almost like i wore it around i think it was a catholic school as if there already wasn't enough like shame and embarrassment and i remember like having to wear it around like why and i think about that now and i'm like what is that legal like i can't believe a school would do that like i can't believe they didn't just wait till the end of the day to do it but i remember having to walk around all day and everyone's like what's that sign like oh you didn't pay your tuition you guys are poor and everyone was just like making fun of the fact that i was poor and that i didn't pay the tuition and i had to go from school to school because the tuition wasn't paid and all that but um little things like that that were just like oh this does a number on a psyche because i just from them then on was always so embarrassed but i think on some level it did make me funny because i felt like i always had to entertain kids to make friends you know i always had to be more entertaining than i was embarrassing or something i had to like earn my seat at the table so I started being funny. Ten Planet Kush, it drains the lactic motherfucking acid. People won't cop to it. The health specialists say, no, that doesn't happen, Joey. Yes, it fucking does. I got friends in Harvard, bitch. I'm like God Brooks. I got friends in high places, motherfuckers. 